Hey everybody, it's John, and um, I've had a lot of people asking me about holster stuff. It happens all the time, and I get it, right? Carrying a firearm, and in particular, I've had a lot of people ask me about alien gear, and you know, so I did a video a while ago last year on uh, hybrid holsters and why I think all hybrid holsters are awful. And some people are saying, yeah, but John, the alien gear shape shift is... Uh, totally better, it answers all your problems, and it is definitely an awesome holster. Um, and so, I, okay, so I'm going to admit a little bias up front that uh, I have a very good friend, in fact, my best friend on earth, who had a really bad customer experience with Alien Gear, and that's put a sour taste in my mouth. But I had a friend actually buy me a shapeshift holster, and um, I want to talk about it with you today. Honestly, um, Here's the overall thing. Here, here's the gist of this review, okay? Uh, this introduction, as it were. Not a full-on review, but an introduction. Um, I, I think the Shapeshift holster can be compared to the IKEA furniture of holsters. It's, um, it, you know, it's do-it-yourself. It's uh, maybe overpriced for what you get. It's not the highest quality, but for some reason, some people just think it's the bee's knees. So the Shapeshift holster, it's IKEA furniture, guys. So first of all, this was not provided by the company in any way. I'm not affiliated with Alien Gear in any way. Uh, in fact, they probably won't like me much in reality. But I had a good friend who said, hey, um, uh, if you review it, I will buy you one. And so he did. And you can see this is for an HK. You might not be able to actually see that. HK VP9. And uh, that is my firearm. So the first thing that you must know is they do not sell you a holster. This is not a holster. This is a box of parts from which you can construct a holster. And um, then once you do, you have this large, ungainly, not great, okay thing, but let's bust into it. So, you know, okay, it's, it's a nice box and it's like zombie greens, okay, cool. So you get, uh, this is the starter kit, right? So you get a bunch of paperwork with it. And then under here, you get a couple of different backers. So this one is like your uh, appendix backer, and uh, this one would be like a strong side backer. Um, and so, you know, you have to, this one here is, is a much more minimalist for something like appendix carry, whereas this one you would put on strong side. And I asked them for left-handed, so they sent me left-handed. Now, one of the things that you notice is, is that there's, if you feel in here, there's some, uh, I think it's spring steel. They said this is back in here. So it's not a, a leather backer. It's like a, a nylon. And on the back side that's going to go on your body, it's got some like fabric material. It's supposed to be kind of breathable and kind of nice. Also, me and Copa, this isn't like an opening. This isn't like a box opening. I've actually been inside this box, put it back together so that I could show it to you. I just wanted to see what was going on in it, but it's brand new. I've never worn it before. I just kind of looked it out. Now, we take this stuff out, and now we have the different stuff in it, okay? So the shell comes put together kind of like this, and it actually has a thumb drive uh, retention mechanism in it with that. And then all these parts. There's your paddle release with a, a different attachment points. And here's the, the attachment for um, uh, appendix carry, so we're going to talk about that. Here's the other side backers, and here's the piece to put it on a larger thing, and here's a bunch of hardware and screws and uh, holster mount hardware stuff and bonus points. And these are the little things that hold everything together. So what you get here is you get a box full of parts. Now. When you go into your starter kit, now you got to go, okay, wait a minute, what holster do I want to make? So, so like I say, it's, it's like Ikea furniture, right? You have to actually make a holster. So I'm going to go to page nine and make an appendix carry holster. You guys know I appendix carry every day. And so this is what it says here. We're going to go, this is page eight. Here we go, page nine. So we get the Coolvin neoprene, a small footprint in a custom retention. Okay. So uh, we're going to attach the shift shell to the holster base. You're going to get the half shell onto the holster base, uh, and there's our OWB set. So here's an interesting bit. What you have here is you have, if I take this guy apart here, one, two, okay. So what we've got to do first is take this apart. So you can see this thing comes apart in two places, and it's held together, really, if I, if I put this bad boy back together, I can show you. You can see here that it actually slides on these little rails here and back here, and then so if I, when I slide them together, then what they stay together, if you're going to use the outside the waistband, is you have these little kind of, what you have here is these, these little kind of lug nut things, 
that then snap into place. And those two are what keep the holster together. So we're going to take it apart because we don't need the whole thing that way. Okay, great. And that is going to be our retention piece. And so what we have to do here is then we got to get the back side of it, which is this guy. And it has to go together like so. Mm. Now, so we got it together. Aha. Now, I'm going to tell you this. You see this right here? So this is what people are saying. Aha, this is fantastic. Now, what this did was, is again, I put this kind of backside shell on it and then put the little clip on it. Now that keeps it together. And the, the trigger guard of the gun goes in here, okay? So what this is now is when we talk about this guy, it's not truly a hybrid holster because truly a hybrid holster has kydex on one side and leather on the other. So really this is a three quarter shell plastic. It's like an injection molded plastic holster with a backer on it is really what this is. So, okay, my VP9 has been, you know, checked out, it's clear. Okay, so again, what we're gonna do here, we're, we're gonna not, uh, um, we're not going to uh, uh, point our gun in a safe direction do anything stupid. But, so now what you can see here is, is that the whole trigger guard is covered, all right? So that is a positive feature of this holster. The entire trigger guard is covered now, and, and it's all covered in plastic. So truly, by my standards, by what we talk about in the three things that you're looking for in a quality holster, in an acceptable holster, this one meets the fact that the entire trigger guard is covered. Okay, fine. All right, now what we need to do here is we need to attach these two. So you gotta find this place here, and this goes on that, and you ins wait, how do we do this? Ha! Ah, that's what you had to do. I forgot, I was trying to put it on the wrong spot. So you gotta learn how to put it together here. This guy kinda sits down on it like this, so it's like a friction fit between these two. And so what you can see here is, is that, again, this backer is just extraneous. It's really this piece that's a three-quarter piece on the holster. But now we've tagged this on there. Now we gotta take the clip. And again, this is a left-handed version, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to slide. We're gonna take it like this, put that up slide this clip into place, and then we need to snap that. So this is, this is the friction point. These are, these little rails are where that is. And now we have built an appendix carry holster. Now it says customize your retention. Now this is going to be important in just a second, because one of the first things that you notice, we now have a, a, a an appendix carry holster. Now here's the thing as it comes from them. Remember one of the things we talked about in the good, uh, holster. Now this is, I'm going to tell you, it feels very bulky to me. That's not the end of the world, but it does feel a little bit bulky. We'll see that in a second. But the bigger thing is, is I can just shake the gun right out. I didn't have to go hard on it. I just shook the gun right out. That's not acceptable level of retention, everybody. So this right now is a fail. I'll tell you what it says to do. It says, aha, it's custom retention, John. See this little piece right here? It says what you got to do here is you have to actually use one of these little dudes, these extra ones, and you can adjust your retention. So what I'm going to do first is take this thing off here. So then that way I can get to it a little easier. And then what they say to do is you insert this here and you can turn it and, and get some additional retention or not. <clears throat> so here's my problem. It's straight up jammed solid. It will not move. Um, I've tried it a bunch. Uh, I tried it off camera too. It, it, it's busted. Let's see if we can unbust it with hand tools. Quarter inch drive fits right into it. That got it to turn. Okay, so it's just really super hard from the factory and now I can adjust the retention on it as much as I would like. Um, I, I think that's a manufacturing fail, quite frankly. I mean, I, if it says you adjust it this way, you should have quality checked that. Um, it, it's just indicative of cheap manufacture, quite frankly. I, I, I think it's, it's crap. It's, it's like Ikea furniture, right? You know how they drill all the holes in it and they say, insert tab A into slot B and, and screw this in and then this, the holes aren't right? It's exactly what I found here. But okay, let's, uh, let's put this bad boy back together again. See what we can get in terms of the right amount of retention. We got that. Okay, so that's great and lovely. Now we have a complete holster. Not good. Okay, so after some futzing with, I think we've got the right amount of retention. All right, so you got a firm click and the gun's... Uh, I mean, it's at least a little click coming out. For a concealment holster, I'm going to give it a pass.
Okay, so I'm gonna give you a quick comparison here of thicknesses, right? So you can see that is how thick a uh, th this alien gear is, including the loop and all that stuff, but that's how far it's gonna stick out from you. The next thing is this is a Filster Classic for a VP9. So you can see how thick that is. And when I sit them side by side, it might be tough to see, but this guy is, I'd guess, all things considered, about a quarter inch to a half inch less thick. So it's definitely less thick. And, and again, when I got this one from Filster, from John, um, it, it was a holster. It was ready to go. He said, here, John, put your VP9 in this. Put it on your body and do your thing. Um, that, that's not what happened with this. I had to make a holster. Uh, something else that you don't have in one of these, if you're going to try to carry appendix, that you do have here is you notice that, that the Filster holster, and I've been carrying in a Keeper's Concealment and um, a KSG Armory holster. Those are my favorite ones, either Filster, uh, uh, Keeper's Concealment, KSG Armory. And what you notice is, is this guy has this little built-in um, wedge uh, in it. And so what that does is when it's sitting on your body, it pushes out and this one does not have that. So this one is going to sit on your body this way. It's gonna tilt in, which is gonna tilt the, the um, handle of the gun out and make it print worse. This one here, comparatively, will push that in to keep the, the handle of the gun in and make it print less. So let's put them on and see what they look like. Okay, we're gonna show each one of these on. And again, I have the Alien Gear right here, and this is the VP9 that we have uh, you know, made sure is clear. I have two other options here that I'm gonna show you. Um, and these are, I wear all the time, okay? So these actually work for me really well. This is a Keeper, uh, Spencer Keeper's Keeper's Concealment. This is a Keeper. Um, it's, a, it's a really good holster. This one's built for my VP9 with RMR. This is a KSG Armory. Oh boy, Gabe, I am so sorry, man, but I'm, I forget. I think it's an Aries is I think the model on this one. And uh, this guy's also cut for my RMR. And this guy has a wedge as well. These both have wedges attached to them. Also a claw here. The keeper uses a slightly different system, uses the belt here to keep the, the butt of the gun in as opposed to a claw. Both of these systems work very, very well. I carry very securely in both of them all the time. You guys have seen these on camera. Now let's compare them to what it looks like with a um, this alien gear. Okay, first let's try the keeper. And again, it's, it, it's snap. Okay, now something that I do like about this one and about the one that I'm gonna show you again, the uh, KSG, is that the belt is held completely securely. This cannot come off the belt. Actually, I'm gonna have to, to, to cut just a second and, and take my belt off a little bit to, to thread this through, and that's part of how it retains. Okay, the reason I'm wearing this shirt, I know it blew out a little bit, and the last one is it's an XL instead of a 2X. You guys know I've been using up weight like crazy. And you can see here that uh, this is how I've concealed my full-size BP9 in the Keeper, right? So this looks great, it's setting there. You notice that the butt of the gun is nice and tight against my body. Everything looks good. I'm not printing at all, and yet I can come get a full firing grip, get the gun out, and do what I need to do. So, again, when we wear Pedics, we make sure that we holster safely. Um, you can see this is the kind of concealment that I get. This is a, an excellent concealing holster. In fact, I'm super happy with it. So the KSG Armory holster, I particularly order it with soft loops, and uh, Gabe knows that I love the soft loops. That's all he sends me holsters with. And um, I'm a big fan of the soft loops. And the reason why is I can then take these, put them down. I don't have to completely kind of undo my belt. Now for appendix carriers, I do wear my uh, belt buckle to the side. That just makes life a lot easier for me. Put it out on the strong side and then don't worry about it. But now I slide those in between. I don't have to worry about that at all. Now come up here, snap those into place. And you notice now it cannot come off my belt. There's no way for it to come off my belt without snapping those. That's very difficult to do. And again, same thing. I have a holster that pretty much completely the, the gun is gone. If you're really careful, you might be able to see something here. But again, same thing. I can come over and get a full firing grip on the gun without any problems. I come over, get the gun, get it out, and go and rock and roll, do my thing, right? Carefully holstering. Hear that click, everything stays in place. And, and this one, again, uses a claw and uses a wedge to keep that gun in its right place. It's quality. Okay, no claw, no wedge, and a clip. So, a couple of things that you notice. First of all, I see the fact that I've got a little bit more here. It's not terrible, but this is sticking out farther. Secondly, the thing that I'm noticing is the gun's canted farther forward. Now, some of that is because I still got this 
tactical muffin top, right? This tactical shelf. A lot of us do, and I'm working to take mine off. Uh, I've still got about 40 pounds to go, but it, it definitely is riding forward. So it's definitely farther forward and it's further out. I can feel it and it's pressing. It's, it's wider in the footprint, you know, down in the sensitive regions of my nether parts. I don't like it as much because I feel like it's, it's harder. Now, can I go and get to the gun? Yes, I can go get to the gun and do what I need to do. And can I safely holster? Now, here's something that I'm noticing already right now. Do you see that this is, is going forward? Now, again, you can say, John, stop being fat. Not wrong, but again, it's something that I have to overcome. And this is a brand new holster. It's literally one of the first times it's been on my body and it's already folding over the top of the entry of the holster. Now, what are most people gonna do? They're gonna fish through that with a gun and they're gonna point the gun at themselves. And I don't wanna do that. So one of the things that the wedge does that it pushes the butt of the gun out. This is all kydex so it stays back because other, otherwise I gotta push this back with my support hand and try not to muzzle my support hand. And most people are going straight into the holster. Go watch my holstering video on that. And like I say, you're gonna come back, touch, tap the outside of the holster and then safely go back in. A couple of things that I noticed with that. Okay, when the gun comes out, I'm okay. I go bang, bang, bang. When the gun goes back in, I don't like this holster. This thing flops over and if it flops over new, Guys, over the course of six months or a year of, of actually going with it, it's going to get worse, right? So again, if I tap over and then drag back, I'm, I'm okay, but notice I haven't clicked in yet. I gotta really click down to get enough retention here. So the, the things that a great uh, appendix carry holster does, this holster doesn't do. That doesn't surprise me because it's not a dedicated appendix holster. So it's not designed to do the things that an appendix holster does well. It doesn't have the touches that a good appendix carry holster does, and, and so it's not going to work as well. I also don't like the clips, guys. I just don't like clips on, on holsters, period, end of subject. The reason is, again, as you bend over, as you sit down, as you do things, that tends to put stress, and then the clip can come out. And then when I go to get the gun, if the clip has slipped at all, and it can slip because of just moving around in general, and, and if my retention's any, then instead of the gun coming out, which it still did there, and that's a good thing, if my retention was a little more, what I do see, and I've seen it before, this one's brand new, hasn't done it yet, is I see the entire holster come out. And if I see the entire holster come out, man, obviously I need to go pew pew with this right now and it has to come out of the holster to do so. And, and, and the other part of that is with either the KSG or the Keeper or the Filster, it can't do that. It's just not going to do that because of the design of the belt clip. And so they're better designs. Now, next thing we've talked about these a little bit already, but I feel like these little plastic clips, they're not heavy duty. They're not heavily designed. I feel like that's gonna be a failure point. And if that guy cracks and falls off, now my, my clip can come off, this holster can come off. On the other side, if this guy gets crap in it or whatever, it can come off. Now the whole holster can come apart with just a little bit of motion. And, and I, I just don't think this kind of a retention mechanism of the entire holster is, is reliable. I just don't think it's good. Next, let's talk about price point. This starter kit, a hundred bucks. Now you might say, yeah, but John, you get three holsters out of it. You get a retention holster, you get a strong side holster and you get an appendix holster. Yeah, but you get a crappy appendix holster. You get a crappy strong side holster. You get a crappy outside the waistband paddle holster. And, and so it doesn't do any of them well. So you get three crappy holsters and you've spent a hundred bucks. If you decide you want to, and let's be real, I appendix carry 99.9% .9 of the time. Almost every day it's appendix for me. So you say, well, you got the starter kit, but really it's a hundred bucks for a holster that I could potentially have some um, stuff if all the parts in here hold up incredibly well. These ones here, uh, the one from Gabe at the Armory, I think is 70 bucks. I think same for the Keeper and the Filster Classic, 60 to 80 bucks for each one of these guys. And they are, uh, you know, uh, f better holsters and less money. Finally, I, I do need to say something about customer service. Again, I know that that is not necessarily uh, indicative of everyone, but my very best friend in the world got the runaround, got the shaft from Alien Gear's customer service. They basically told him to suck it up when his holster fell apart because all the screws came out and they said, well, that's just maintenance issues. That's not our problem. Um, yes, it is. Your, your, your holster should hold together. You shouldn't have to deal with that stuff. Again, these three guys, I can tell you, I know all of them personally. I know Gabe at the Armory. I know John at Filster. I know Spencer at Keeper's Concealment. And I know their customer service policy. Anything went wrong with your holster, send it to me. I will send you and I'll fix it and get it back to you. In fact, shoot, most of the time they'll just be like, hey, just keep it. It's too much of a pain in the butt. I'll just send you a new holster. These guys stand behind their product and they treat people well.
These guys, not so much. So the shapeshift holster, it's the IKEA furniture holsters, guys. It, it's it's okay. Um, it it meets the minimum requirements for a holster, right? It 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 holds the holster securely, or it holds a gun securely rather. You can get a click out of it. It allows a access to the firearm reliably if you set it up correctly. It it uh, covers the trigger guard completely. So it does those three things, but it doesn't do any of them well. And for the money, I just don't think it's great. In the same vein, right? If you want to go buy a bookshelf at Ikea, go buy a, I don't know what it is, a Bjorn or something. And then you get a box of parts and you take it home and you struggle to put it together. And um, and then it won't last past one move or, you know, a move across the hall because it's, it's Ikea furniture, you know, until you get to the high-end stuff. This is not the high-end stuff. Um, is it acceptable? Yeah, it's okay. Honestly, I think with the flap on the appendix, it's going to get bad in a hurry. I, I don't trust the clasps on this, uh, the, the things that keep it together. I don't think it's a quality holster. It meets the minimum requirements, but it's certainly not as good as any of the other three that I've shown you. There are several others that would be better as well. So this, guys, just leave the IKEA furniture at the store. Buy something better.